This is the Road to Tokyo. Hello and welcome to the third installment in the Road to Tokyo, the VR sculpting art battles brought to you by Paint and Oculus Medium. I'm Brian Sharp, co-founder of Oculus Medium, here to host once again. This week we are in London for the third installment and final qualifying round of the Road to Tokyo. Let's take a look back at what happened last time in New York City. VR has been one of those things that has really gotten me through a lot of tough times and to be able to go and share that with people in Tokyo would just be so wonderful. I think it's any man or woman's game today. You could be the most skilled artist and still completely fail. The winner is Milad. Congratulations. Milad became champion of New York City and won an all expense paid trip to Tokyo to compete in the Limits World Grand Prix. On today's show, eight more artists will compete in a winner-takes-all, knockout-style tournament. Artists will be given a theme and will compete head-to-head -head in 10-minute sculpting battles. This is The Road to Tokyo. Quarterfinal battle number one. All right, it's time for the first quarterfinal match here at the Road to Tokyo, London, between Thijs and Keith. I'm Keith Talbot. I come from the small small village called Ashik up in Northumberland. My art style is completely random. I do all sorts of stuff. I've gone from digital sculpting, 3D printing, to traditional painting, so that's quite cool. <laughs> so yeah, I do everything. Anything to do with art, I do. My name is Thijs Merle Jacobsen. I'm a a concept artist and visual designer based in Copenhagen, Denmark. My art style is realistic. My projects range all the way from, from um, realistic concept art to basic illustration. I tend to call it my 3D pencil because that's pretty much what it is to me at this point. I'm using it for pretty much everything ever since. I'd like to introduce our other host for today, executive producer and product manager of Oculus Medium, Kelly Townley. Kelly, thanks for joining us today. I'm super excited to be here. Kelly and I will be judging the performance based on four criteria. The idea, the speed, the artist's technique with medium, and their visual storytelling during their performance. Now all we need is a theme. Kelly, you want to spin that wheel? Infinite fire. Infinite fire. There's your theme, infinite fire. I'll give you guys a minute to think about that while I head back to the judges table, and then we'll start your time. Quarterfinal battle number one. Tyus versus Keith. Starting in five, four, three, two, one, fight. This is now the third one of these qualifiers I've judged. It's been a remarkably consistent kind of pace that people use through these, where I think without really planning on it, everyone kind of tends to follow the same rhythm. Yeah, I always love to see what features people use, and it's always mm -hmm. the ones I think they're going to use, which is exciting. But they always come up with a kind of a different way of, of doing it. Right, but it's interesting already seeing both of them using, you know, kind of different block-in styles. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the past, we've seen some other ones too. You see the, the kind where someone, you know, kind of does a gestural sketch really right. quickly and then fills in forms. Both of them are going for mass immediately, but in different ways. Five minutes left. Like your Gosh, it goes so fast. I know. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing, right? Very, yeah. very fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand, I mean, it's consistent feedback from, well, those of us, you know, judging, but also all of the artists who've competed in the past qualifiers. On the one hand, it feels like it goes in the blink of an eye. On the other hand, as someone watching, it's insane how much they get done. Ten minutes. Yeah, I, mean. I know, right? I, I mean, the reason why we started doing these battles is, is to show how fast you can get something pretty awesome in medium. Yeah. This might go horribly wrong. <laughs> it's an experiment. It goes horribly wrong, it goes horribly wrong. I feel like life is an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes left. Mm -hmm. We've got some precision manipulation going on. Mm -hmm. One minute left. You know, when you're looking at two very different works and very different styles, right, which I think, you know, Limits uses the same criteria for Photoshop battles, where I'm sure you get yeah. artists, you know, painting in totally different styles. And oh, it's yeah. like, how do you even judge these? Yeah. So I think having something to be like, all right, just walk through idea, speed, technique, storytelling, yeah. helps to kind of um, put them on the same level. 10 seconds. 
Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. Done. Tess's technique, I think, really strong. Kind of yeah. knew, knew what he was doing going in. Yeah. Um, good use of stamps, plus the, you know, a lot of the time you see someone just put them down and not use the move tool to kind of blend and create those transitions. I think he did a really good, I mean, that's a really good figure for 10 minutes. Yeah, the, po the pose and the gesture is really good. Right. Great. Yeah. Um, I think the probably the weaker side for his sculpt is um, execution of the theme. Right. Is a little weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like infinite, maybe, you know, fire for sure. I like the emissive layer and everything. The infinite part, maybe a little less so. Yeah. They're very different, very different outcomes. It's yeah. hard. This is going to be crazy today <laughs> for it me. Is. I'm I think, stressed. I think for long. Keith, I agree with you about the experience in VR. I think I was just hoping for a, a little bit more of a like finished technical piece. Yeah, I would agree with that. It is very, very simple. Not a lot of, you know, technique yep. in, for sculpting. All right. Some cool painting though. I would have liked to see maybe more color. That's true. Yeah. Time for judgment. After the quarterfinal battle between Tyus and Keith, it was an honor watching both of you sculpt. Kelly says her palms are sweaty. Thank you so much. That was a real privilege. After deliberation, we have come to a decision. The winner of the first quarterfinal round here in the London Road to Tokyo is Tyus. Congratulations and thank you so much. Thanks both of you. Tyus wins and advances to the final. Um, it could have gone worse and it could have gone better. So I guess for first round, it's, it was okay. I need to relax a little bit. It's tense, <laughs> it's tense, you know. Quarterfinals, battle number two. Here in London on the road to Tokyo, it's time for our second quarterfinal match. This one between Lee Martin. Hi, I'm, I'm Lee, Lee Mason. I'm a, I'm a digital artist from Peterborough near, near London. The first time I used VR was the DK1. That one moment just blew my mind. The fact that I was like, okay, VR is definitely going to be a thing now. I am Martin Nebelong. Um, I'm a freelance artist from Denmark. Um, so I would describe my art style as uh, a mix of fantasy and sci-fi mostly. I've been working in VR for the last three years or so. I'd been seeing some videos online of the medium developers talking about about the program and, and I knew immediately that I had to try this. You guys ready? Yeah. All we need is a theme. Kelly, you want to give us that theme? Courageous time. Courageous time. All right, you guys are going to get one minute to think about that with the headsets up and we'll start the clock and you begin sculpting. Quarterfinal, battle number two. Lee versus Martin. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Courageous time is one of the more abstract, you know, sometimes you get a really concrete theme, sometimes you get a more abstract one. Yeah. I think it all evens out because obviously they're both working with the same theme, but it's always uh, interesting to watch how they start when they have a more abstract one. So far, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the third uh, qualifying tournament and consistently, you know, uh, the two artists interpret the theme really differently and have very different styles of working, which I think makes it really fun to watch. It is, it's super fun. Harder to judge, but. True. <laughs> More fun to watch. Also interesting to see, I feel like there's a very clear stylistic distinction between artists yes. for whether they choose colors when they're adding the clay or whether they paint later. Right. And it's all, you can always, or you can usually tell if somebody right. has like a illustration background or a traditional sculpting background or 3D modeling background. They always tend to approach it, you know, in their own little right. like disciplined ways that they probably originally learned. This lineup of artists is really exciting because a lot of these people we've seen on our social media channels for years. Mm -hmm. And now we're meeting them for the first time right. and we get to watch how they work. It's so exciting to yeah. me. It's also interesting with some of these more abstract themes that, you know, it's not like the artists get a chance to give a little, you know, spoken word presentation about their work. So the, the intention of the theme has to really come through clearly. It's easy to get lost in watching people. It's so meditative. It's mm -hmm. like Bob Ross style. We talk about Bob Ross all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the medium team. Yeah. It's like, oh, you just like sit here and watch. Yeah. And I will say if I was unconvinced of the value of move and elastic move before <laughs> these qualifiers, I'm uh, very, very convinced now. Just, David would be so proud. He really would. <laughs> yeah. David's our graphics engineer, our lead graphics engineer. Yep. And this was, Elastic Move was his baby. One minute left. These are pretty opposite stylistically. They which really is, are. Which is really interesting. Yeah. 
Ten seconds left, artists. Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. Well done. <laughs> Tour de Force performance of technique and speed from Martin, for sure. Yes. I mean, like he just hit the ground running early on. I was a little worried about um, Lee, just in terms of he was kind of like, didn't start sculpting for a while. Seemed right. like he was trying to figure things out. But then he got a ton done. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Martin is like super mega pro at just roughing in environments yeah. and, and having like that composition to play with kind of immediately. Right. Um, and But then the thing about the visual storytelling side of his is like, oh, of course, he's going to put like a, a monster dude in the cave and there's going to be like a person looking at it. Like right. it was it was pretty it, it was a big giveaway. Yeah. With Lee, for me, it felt yeah. like. I was like, oh, he's gonna obviously do something with the time. And I was like, oh, we made like a spring, and then he made a bird. But the thing that I like about it, and I don't know if it was intentional, is that the bird is not actually attached to the spring. Yeah. So that made and it like courageous, right? right? So I kind of like that. In terms of theme interpretation, I get where Martin was going with, you know, it's it's like time for courage, kind yeah. of courageous mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, something about Lee's interpretation of it speaks to me a little bit more. I think yeah. Just in terms of the the literal use of time. Um, Right, it's a little bit more unique, even though it's got a clock on it, which is not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you think time, it's right. like, of course, a clock. But like, there's something about the bird leaping from the cuckoo clock. Yep. Um, yeah. All right. Hard one. Time for judgment. Second quarterfinal match here in the London version of the Road to Tokyo. Uh, it was a pleasure watching Lee and Martin sculpt. You guys did amazing work, both of you. And in the deliberations, uh, we were unable to come to a decision which means that we are going into the tiebreaker rules. Tiebreaker rules are you both immediately get five more minutes to continue sculpting on the same sculpt with the same theme. Get ready. We'll give you another minute. You can, uh, you know, I know we've adjusted the sculpts. We kind of moved them out of the way so you can get everything set up. Then we'll give you another 60 seconds to kind of think. And then we'll begin the five minute timer. I think that the fact that they, they wanted us to have a Another go at the model shows that the, um, the judges are, you know, split between the two uh, visual styles, maybe. I was not expecting that at all. I was expecting to hear that I was, I was out of the competition. And then he just said, you've got to carry on five more minutes. So I'm happy. Quarterfinal battle number two, tiebreaker battle. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Second battle and tiebreaker. We do not see a lot of ties in these qualifiers. I know. This is, you know, one thing where I think the criteria really help because, you know, obviously their work was so different. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to, you know, trying to decide, uh, you know, that there's a tie or whatnot without the criteria, I think it would be impossible. Right, yeah. Key to doing well in the overtime is having a clear assessment of where the, you know, what needs shoring up, right? What, right. Where it can really benefit from that work. Right. One minute left. Don't worry, we don't do double overtime, so this is actually your final minute. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. Nice job. Yeah, you guys are good sport. Well, we had a tie, and uh, Lee and I had to go up again uh, for fi five more minutes. We just said it would have been nice if we'd have had a break halfway through, that would be quite cool to like gather your thoughts and then continue with your piece. And then we went in and said, you've got five more minutes, so. I don't know, I think it could go either way. I think I did okay. Like when I came out, I just, I thought it wasn't obvious what I was trying to communicate because uh, I hadn't quite finished, to be honest. Like there was a little bit I wanted to do and I was able to actually do that. I really, I do really want to win. I, yeah, so hopefully. I hope the judges like my piece. So let's see. Time for judgment. All right, that was an exciting overtime between Lee and Martin. Thank you guys so much. You guys are great sports. It was a pleasure walking, watching you work yet again. After deliberation, the judges, we have come to a decision. The winner of the second quarterfinal match in the London qualifier on the road to Tokyo is... Lee. Congratulations. <laughs> Lee wins well done, and advances sir. to the semi-final. It's just sinking in, actually. It's just sinking in. I wasn't expecting it uh, at all. I, um, but I think the extra five minutes made all the difference. 
I think he would have won, but I was able to tell a story with those extra few minutes. So I'm, yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> quarterfinal, battle number three. Time for the third quarterfinal battle here at the London Qualifier on the road to Tokyo. This one between Leo and Henry. I'm Leo Vitti. I'm a 3D artist. My style, I would define it fun. Uh, a friend of mine let me try it, and medium actually. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy it. And then I try it. And after I tried it the same weekend, I bought it. I mean, it was completely mind blowing, like a different, completely different experience. I'm Henry, uh, Scouts from, uh, from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I'm a freelance artist. Uh, I work mostly in medium. Creature design, do a lot of faces. With medium, I have unlimited materials. I have, I have like a space to express myself, like paint. And so I'm, I'm a huge fanboy. To represent medium uh, at something like this, you know, like it's... Yeah. We're about ready to go. All we need is a theme. Kelly, you want to hit us with a theme? Yes, indeed. Here we go. We have secret. Time. Secret time. Secret. We'll give you one minute on the clock to think about that, and then we'll let you know. Put the headsets on and start sculpting. Quarter final, battle number three. Leo versus Henry. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Secret time. Secret. It's another, it's another interesting one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of them really hitting the ground running in terms of tossing some clay out on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's so funny. It's its almost exactly like the last one. It was just distinctive styles right. and a distinctive approach. Mm -hmm. I had a guess at what Leo was doing with color in the beginning, and I was right, and I think it's really interesting. This is the first first person I've seen, you know, in these qualifiers do exactly that. Mm-hmm. Because I think I had less of an idea of what Henry was up to initially, and now it's starting to come into focus. Mm-hmm. Four minutes left. I'm a little envious of the people who are going to be watching the edited footage later because on the one hand, it's really captivating to watch these artists work. On the other hand, it's, you know, it adds this element of stress that I'm like, oh my gosh. I know, I know. <laughs> totally. Two minutes left. Some stamps, we get some surface constraint, we get cut. They're really pulling out all the stops. Yeah. It's like a demo reel for medium. I know. <laughs> We should be filming this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm putting a big production behind it. Just yeah. under two minutes left, artists. Man, the gestures for both, so good. 30 seconds remaining. You're both doing phenomenal jobs. I'm getting sweaty palms again, Brian. Yeah? I feel like this is a theme with you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> On their behalf, I'm doing it for you. Get you like a 10 seconds left. I need like a golf towel. Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Head sets off. Yeah. I love what Leo did with the palette on the bottom. Yep. It kind of immediately hinted he was gonna have a really consistent composition, like color-wise, and he did. And that's also like the true sign of like a like a seasoned digital artist. Right. And Henry immediately started massing out forms and he got, yep. I mean, the, the gesture on the tree and then watching it and you know it began as this tree and then when he when he used the surface constraint and the stamps in there i mean just you know technically obviously knew his way around the tool right got the results he wanted out of it yeah um really solid work really amazing yeah i think that in terms of ideas and just like the, the storytelling leo's i pretty as soon as he duplicated the clock guy i was like oh they're gonna tell a secret to each other i just kind of knew and it yeah. took me a long time to catch on to henry's but i think in terms of the idea you know uh, I think I think Leo's was, was on point from the beginning. Yeah. Time for judgment. In the third quarterfinal match between Leo and Henry, uh, you guys both did amazing work. It was a pleasure watching both of you sculpt. The deliberations took us a little while and the results were very close, but we have come to a decision. The winner of this round is Leo. Congratulations. Leo wins and advances to the semifinal. It was tough. Like it was a really hard kind of theme to come up with, but um, I don't know, I always put in that kind of direction. So hopefully they 
got what I meant with it, but apparently they did, so it was good. Quarterfinal battle number four. We are just about ready for the quarterfinal match here at the London Road to Tokyo between Ross and Barbara. My name is Barbara and I am a 3D artist. So my art style uh, is kind of how I, my friends call it, a bit creepy, but at the same f time funny. So it's something that I usually like to have a double meaning. So have something cute that is, if you look twice, is really ugly or really evil. Um, Ross. Medium didn't change how I approach my art. Medium is where I started. Basically didn't do art until uh, Medium came out and I realised I could actually do it. All we need is a theme. Kelly, you want to give us one? I would be happy to, Brian. Looks like we have Sacred Key. All right, Sacred Key. K key like K-E-Y. Yes. All right, Sacred Key. 60 seconds on the clock. Get ready to think about it. We will give you a countdown before the sculpting begins. Quarterfinal, battle number four. Ross versus Barbara. Starting in five, four, three, Two, one, fight. I like Sacred Key as a theme. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, me too. I think Ross might win for best outfit of the day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. For the, the accessory awards. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I feel like I say this every <laughs> single match, always interesting, you know, we, we have yet to have a match where the artists start with you know, the same interpretation of the theme, or the same style, or even the same tool. Mm-hmm. So you're both using default clay, then? They are using default clay, that's true. I feel like I can say that. Yep. <laughs> Without stressing anyone out. Right. <laughs> As we've been talking about in the previous matches, one of the things we look for is a, a, a piece that looks finished, right? We're not looking for the kind of detail you'd get out of an eight-hour sculpt, right. obviously, but... Um, you know, wants to look like you had a process that, that, that completed right by the end, that you didn't kind of just end up halfway done. Right. Um, and so a lot of it's just time management. A lot of it's mm -hmm. kind of having the idea and knowing, knowing when it's time to, how much detail to put in and when it's time to move to the next phase. Right, yeah. It's like interpretation of themes starting to get pretty clear on both sides. Mm hmm Is this the last quarterfinal? It this is. is the last quarterfinal. Mm. I know. Which makes it feel dramatic, though of course we do them in no particular order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna just say a couple of fun facts about these two artists. Yeah. Because I think they're very, very interesting. Go for it. Uh, Barbara used to compete in horse show jumping. Wow. And Ross is a really good kayaker. Those are, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is actually pretty awesome. I sort of wonder the, you know, the times that we. Um, specifically mentioned were kind of arbitrary decisions just because you want to kind of do more and more as the time's running out and I wonder if that's really you know one of the things that prompts people to kind of move you know when I say oh, three minutes like, yeah okay what am I what do I have to take a step back here right yeah one minute left prepare to finish in five four Three, two, one. Headsets off. Amazing work, both. Woo! From a visual storytelling perspective, I was waiting for Ross to sculpt an actual key the entire time. Yeah, me too. I was like, <laughs> I was on edge. Yeah, I'm like, where, where's the key? I really like what Barbara did with the key. I think the use of emissive and that kind of style, it's like this very cool glyph rune-like look. What I'm not super into is the face of the angel. I mean, maybe it's because sacred and key are a little bit more literal, but they were both interpreted interpreted pretty literally, which they were. it would have been interesting to see maybe more experimentation. I thought his beginning was really strong in terms of visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. He started with a block and he cut a keyhole in it. And you're like, right. I get it. I see where this is going. Yeah, yeah. And he started to block the face in and mm -hmm. I was intrigued. I think in the end, I mean, if you just look at it right now, uh, the face actually kind of obscures the keyhole. It doesn't even necessarily read as a keyhole right. um, super well. On Barbara's side, you know, towards the end, she was starting to try to add some kind of detail to the wings and I think ran out of time. So I think there was some, some kind of time management there about having the idea. I think really she could have benefited by spending a moment thinking about how much time she was actually gonna have to make the angel and right. figuring out, you know, like we've talked about before, like 
a piece that looks complete. This looks like she, you know, she really wanted to spend a lot more time yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And scaling down your idea enough to where you can make it complete in 10 minutes. Right, exactly. Time for judgment. It was an exciting last quarterfinals match here at the London Road to Tokyo between Ross and Barbara. It was a pleasure watching both of you sculpt. Thank you so much. It's an honor. After deliberation, uh, we the judges have come to a decision. The winner of this quarterfinal match is... Ross. Congratulations. Ross wins and advances to the semifinal. I don't think I'm a competitive person. I tend to compete against myself and... It feels good to go through, but at the same time, I sort of felt bad for, for putting my opponent out. So I, I think if, if I went through in the next one, I'd probably feel bad about putting my opponent out again. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of mixed bag, eh? Now, I've judged a lot of art battles before, but this one is super exciting to me because, first of all, the lineup is stacked. And second of all, we have a lot of artists here who are not traditional 3D modelers. They started out with medium, and now they're here sculpting and competing with it, which yeah. is crazy yeah. and super exciting. This is the third one of these qualifiers I've judged, and the last two were amazing. I'm not really sure how today could possibly <laughs> top them, but I am looking forward to seeing what the artists bring. Awesome, yeah, and I hope there's lots of drama and excitement. I'm, I'm stoked. Yep. Semi-final, battle number one. It's about time for the first semi-finals match here at the London qualifier for the Road to Tokyo. This one between Tyus and Lee. To win is gonna take um, a little bit of luck and being able to relax into it, enjoy it, I think that's that's all it's about for me. I just wanna enjoy it um, and meeting other people. Well, uh, I, haven't, I haven't been in a competition before, so for me it would be interesting to see how I would perform in a scenario like that. Um, plus Tokyo is I mean, it's a, it's a pretty strange place from what I've heard, and I'd like to experience that. All we need is a theme. Kelly, you want to give us one? Night stage. Night stage. All right, 60 seconds on the clock to think about it. We'll count you down, and you know the drill. Semi-final battle number one. Tyus versus Lee. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Fight! Our first London semi-final. I know, right? The Battle of the Grey Shirts. Indeed. The House of Grey Shirts. That's right. I think this is the first time in all three qualifiers that I've seen stage as the that second word in the theme. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It's a rare sight. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Interesting development. I was going to say, both of them immediately seem to have an idea. I just don't know what they are. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Now that we've seen both of these artists, um, both of their workflows, I'm recognizing their workflows. Yep. Both of them. Yeah, it is true. It's funny when you don't know what they're doing, you're like more intrigued. You're no, like, I know. Well, it's just different. It's <laughs> like then once you kind of figure it out, then you're kind of watching to see how it develops. But for now, it's right. kind of like... Wow. Interesting. See, in both of these cases, these are kind of those moments that I think speak to the visual storytelling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will note without giving too much away that this is an interpretation, uh, mm -hmm. an open to interpretation thing we have seen before uh, in previous qualifiers, which is why we don't necessarily clarify the theme all the way. I'll say what Lee just did is a move you can almost always see coming. Not uncommon. Mm-hmm. Here, I was just waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five minutes left. There's something about the semifinals that really, um, really feels like it makes a difference. I know. All I right. can definitely feel it. Two minutes left. Wow, pretty crazy move by Tyus over there. That was... Did yeah. Not, did not expect he was about to do that. There really is like a level of charm in some of these sculpts. That I, I know. It's just so endearing. It's so adorable. Some last minute tweaking and additions. Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. Woo! Yeah. I don't expect to win this one, that's for sure. The idea was okay, and in my head it looked a lot better, and I ran out of time before I, 
I wanted to do something specific that I didn't have time to do, which is really frustrating. I was definitely feeling the pressure up to it, but then once I took the decision to go in a slightly different way with it, I felt more at ease. Hope the judges really love knights, I guess. <laughs> I am blown away by Tyus's technical competence and speed. Like the thing that he managed to yeah. do in 10 minutes is mind blowing. I mean, he got transitions between his forms. Yeah. That the, the the simple gesture there without it reminds me of like a classical sculpture. There's you don't need color and you don't need lighting. It's just the shapes are there and the gesture is there and it's kind of just like right. So good. You know, I think there was a bunch of detailing in the back that he did that probably didn't overall contribute. Like there were things yeah, that yeah. he spent time on that probably he could have skipped. But I mean, yeah. And just looking at his technical mastery, you know, yeah. when he put down the that kind of thin block shape in the middle and then use the move tool to pull it out into the ridge on the helmet. I mean, right. he just knows how to get what he wants out of this tool yeah. very quickly. The shapes are just 100% there. Right. To me, I think that Lee's concept was stronger. Yeah. It is a little bit literal. I was kind of hoping to see him do something else with the stage than literally put like yeah. moon and stars, but I think... Um, was he going for a rocket ship there at the end? Is that what that is? Or what is that? Yeah, so there, that's kind of a little bit of an elephant in the room. I think from a speed <laughs> perspective, he wanted yeah, to do yeah. something at the end and he, he clearly ran out of time, like yeah, he very yeah. visibly did. Yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, it is very charming. They're very different stylistically. And right. I think, I, I agree with you. I think it is a literal literal interpretation. Yeah. But it's super cute and, and charming. Time for judgment. That was a super exciting match to watch. I think the semifinals, that kind of extra bit of tension, the artist already having done a round beforehand, kind of amps things up a little bit. And it was a joy to watch both of you work. After deliberations, we've come to a decision. The winner of the semifinals round one on the London Road to Tokyo is... Tyus. Right. Tyus wins <laughs> and advances to the final. I'm really happy it turned out that way. I was, yeah, not really sure where where that would go. If I can s somehow make the theme work to my strengths in the same way, I'll definitely try and do that. Semi-final, battle number two. Just about ready for the semi-finals match here on the London Road to Tokyo qualifier, this time between Leo and Ross. I'll either get lucky again and someone come to me that I can do quick, or, or I'll just be standing there like an idiot for 10 minutes, which isn't that long to stand and look like an idiot. I can deal with that. I just I just keep doing my thing and then eventually, if I win, it's good. If I don't, I don't mind. It's like, I'm here, I'm having fun. That's, that's the important thing. Kelly, you want to give us our theme for this battle? Nostalgic. Wing. Nostalgic wing. Wing. As always, you got a minute to think, then we'll give you a countdown, and then with sculpting we'll begin. Semi-final, battle number two. Leo versus Ross. Starting in five, four, three, two, one, fight. I just wanted to point out too that they're both wearing red shirts now. They are both wearing red shirts. <laughs> For those watching, we did not deliberately bias to stack the gray shirts against each other and the red shirts against each other. That was an accident. Seen something we've seen before from Leo. Yep. yep. <laughs> kind of like that. It's like, uh, you know, chess openings or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the specific interesting thing to, that it says to me isn't just that he's doing it, but that he, he knows, like he's already made these decisions, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes it easier later on, right? Because you're not thinking about that. You're like, this is what I'm gonna do. These are my colors. I was gonna say Ross had grid snap on, which might be one of the, I don't remember if we've seen that earlier. Not a lot of constraint usage today. Some line constraint, but otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I haven't seen grid constraint. So. Oh, see line constraint now. Speak of the devil. Again, with the awesome kind of new techniques that mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what's happening. Right. But. It's a really cool technique. <laughs> I know, it almost resem it reminds me of, um, you know, uh, uh, using armature yeah, water I was in, just real, gonna in say, real sculpture. I was going to say the same thing. Five minutes left. Like you said in the last one, it's interesting to see similar kind of styles emerging. You know, it's yeah. like, I feel like we kind of know both artists a bit better from their, their work in the quarterfinals. and Right. And how they bring things together. Mm -hmm. Two minutes left. 
Oh yeah, steady stroke in combination with surface constraint, not doing exactly what he wants. Yeah. I don't think that's, yeah. I know why it behaves that way, but I also know what you wanted it to do. Probably the <laughs> strongest visual storytelling from both artists. Uh, this round. 30 seconds remaining. You're both doing amazing work. You should take all of the laughter as a compliment, both of you. No, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. All right, that was. What's going through my mind is, I'm glad I got through the quarterfinals before that happened. <laughs> that was a, that was a really bad topic. My brain just flatlined. I was like, wing, okay. If I got through to the final, it would be a surprise. Pleasant surprise, but a surprise, yeah. I did good. I think I did better than the previous one, so it's good. I mean, I've prefer to have no expectations at all. I just like go, oh, yeah, have fun. But now if I, I don't like this feeling. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like this, what's going on, but yeah. For Ross's, I have to say, the whole time I was like, what is he doing? Yeah. What is he doing? What, I don't understand. Like, like, is he it was... literally just a wing? Yeah. Like, I was very confused. I was like, I thought he was just gonna draw like a, like a sad little wing. And then the end, well, and even then, in the end, he like had two of them and he just drew us, and I was like, is he literally drawing a circle around the one that's like, that seems like a punt. And then when I realized it was a thought bubble, I was like. Amazing. That is, that is amazing. I know. That was, I... That's like the best visual storytelling <laughs> yes. score of like the, yeah. all three qualifiers. It has everything that you, lo that you love in like a little, it's like a little comic. Leo's is obviously super adorable and super cute and super literal. So much literal. character. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a, yeah, it's totally a little cartoon character. And mm -hmm. you start to wonder, you know, what, how did he break his wing? And you know, right. you know, what happened? And so there's, there's some story behind that too that's, that's, you know, more nostalgic and more sad. Right. When the Maybe. tears and his, the style he uses, the mm -hmm. eyes, all this kind of stuff. Leo's sculpt is, is far, far stronger, right? From a technical, mm. technical execution standpoint and mastery of the tool. That said, it's very much the same style, um, you know, that, that he used in the first round. Right. But I don't think that's a problem. I'm not gonna expect an artist to come in and do something wildly different every single right. round. Yeah. Right? He knows how to use the tool to get really good results out of it and he, and he delivers. Yeah. Time for judgment. I've watched a lot of these qualifying matches at this point, having judged all three of our qualifiers. And that was, I think, the most entertaining one. Never laughed so hard. Uh, and really just impressed at the work that both of you did. I think it was amazing. Um, took us a while to deliberate. Uh, in the end, uh, it was a very difficult decision. We did come to a decision. The winner of the semifinals round in this London Road to Tokyo match is... Leo. Congratulations. Leo wins and advances to the final. It's Karen now. This is getting serious. Um, yeah, I gotta win because I'm so close. It would be like, it would be a shame. So now I'm going all in and yeah, let's see. Let's see for the next one. London championship round. You joined us in California and you joined us in New York City and here in London, it is the final battle of the final qualifier on the road to Tokyo. No pressure, but between Tyus and Leo, one of these two artists is winning an all expense paid trip to Tokyo, and it all comes down to this. I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm, I have the taste of blood in my mouth. Let's get it on. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's, it's, I'm getting better also the, the more I do it. I mean, it's just been two so far, but probably I'm looking forward for the next one now. One of these two artists is winning an all expense paid trip to Tokyo, and it all comes down to this. Kelly, you want to give us our final theme? Definitely. Woo! Your theme is Lonely City. Lonely, lonely City. Lonely City. 
You know the drill, 60 seconds on the clock to think, and then we will begin sculpting. London Championship Round, Tyus versus Leo. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Fight. On the one hand, Kelly, I want to leave these artists to sculpt in peace. On the other hand, I want to note that the entire day has been building to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> A hush falls over the crowd. I know, right? Everything is at stake, Brian. Everything is at stake, that's true. Leo doing his palette thing. I know. I feel like at this point, it is an aspect of the visual storytelling. It's like a kind of a little... little uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh. I want to see if these two are going to be relying on their kind of individual stylistic strengths. Mm-hmm. Well, the interesting thing about city as one of the theme words is that it's one of the few theme words that tends to kind of imply something about the composition, right? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, there's the gonna ones. be some kind of environmental aspect to it, very likely. Or, yeah, I mean, or there could be a different interpretation. It's just, I think it takes a little more creativity. The other nouns we've had before, fire and, and uh, you know, stuff like that, it's like you can incorporate them into mm -hmm. different different sorts of things. That's right, yeah. I mean, this is also interesting because these are two artists that we have seen do exclusively um, objects, right? Mm -hmm. Like exclusively kind of smaller objects being given a theme that um, it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, if they either try something really outside what we've seen before today or whether they find a way to incorporate that theme into something more like what, what we're used to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for a very long time, wanted to add the wet brushing and dry brushing features to the paint yes. tool. And watching Leo right now really makes me I wish know. that I had done that. But I know. Five minutes left. That's a good example of what I, you know, I've been talking about early in earlier matches where it's like you don't have to do something that obeys a particular style, but mm -hmm. you want it to look like a deliberate stylistic choice right. and not just a lack of precision or you know yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, or like you don't know how to use the tool. Right, and I think that's a, this is a great, mm -hmm. what we're seeing right now is a good example. Like like deliberate mm -hmm. sorts of choices. Let's see some compositional work. Some lighting. Yeah. One minute left. Prepare to finish in five. Four, three, two, one. Headsets off. Yeah. In hindsight, I, I should have uh, focused less on the character in the final seconds and just I, my plan was from the beginning to grab the buildings in the end and duplicate them around to do a clean silhouette. So I messed up on the bat on the last part. So, but hopefully the idea shows shows through anyway, but uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean, is I don't know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not confident this time, uh, to be honest. But let's see, let's see what happens. Who knows? This is the twenty first qualifying round I've judged now. I think that's true, <laughs> including two overtimes across all three cities, and this is like by far the hardest decision I think of all of them. I love like when inanimate, when inanimate objects have personality, like mm -hmm. in Leo's, right? So you have these like really gestural cubes, essentially, but they're saying a lot. Um, it, it feels really good, and it feels like a like a, kind of an original interpretation of the theme, where with Tyus's, it's it's more almost exactly what I would expect if I drew the theme Lonely City, right? It's like a, a person standing at nighttime, probably in the right. city, right? Um, but that said, the lighting and composition is like crazy good yes. in his. Um, it, it, when I looked at it in VR, basically from every angle it looked great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was just like this really beautiful, like the shadows, the the whole like grayscale of the whole thing is just really, really good. I think it's right. I think it's specifically the lighting and the composition. In no other qualifier match, including Tyus's own earlier things, did I see anyone use like the materials and the lighting and everything to create a composition like that. Right. I mean, like that looks like a shot out of like a noir graphic yeah, novel, yeah, yeah. right? It's the very super moody. hard lighting. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, the way he moved the light to the street light, that kind of thing. And there's like the suggestion of the building, but like it's not fully formed, it's just a shape with some like contrasting colors. There's just something really, really, really nice about looking at that. Right, exactly. Like, Whereas this has a lot of like personality, yeah. this one has a lot of emotion, like it's, it's like... And I think, right, all the gestures on Leo's are amazing. I mean, that like little slump in the building reads yeah. so well, right? And like, the other ones are moving away, like kind of like, Ugh. Exactly, like, it's it so tells charming. It, yeah, it's, it is. Time for judgment. In the London Road to Tokyo finals match between Tyus and Leo, we watched some amazing sculpting by both artists. As the judges, we deliberated for a very long time. However, in the end, we were tied. Which means that for the second time today in this qualifier, we're going to the overtime rules, which is this. Both of you will receive five more minutes right now to continue sculpting on these sculpts. And if it is any consolation, there is no rule for double overtime. So this is it for real this time. You guys ready? All right. London Championship tiebreaker round. Starting in five, four, three, two, one, fight. This is so intense, I don't want to say anything. I know. <laughs> I know I feel like I should have some sort of insightful commentary, but I'm just really curious to see what they do. I know, yeah. Two and a half minutes left out of five. One minute, 30 seconds. One minute left. Thirty seconds. Ten. Prepare to finish in five, four, three, two, one. Headsets off. I'm really happy with the way to, uh, things turned out because I got to go back and get exactly the small bit of time I wanted. So, so now I sort of had the chance to merge everything together to execute what I originally wanted. So. There's no 3D left in it. It's just pure black and white ink. So yeah, that was awesome. I don't know. I, I think I improved it a bit. Kind of, it's, it's more, looks more lonely and sad in the end. So that's that's what I was aiming for. Right now, it's just about what what kind of style they prefer. What do you think? Ah! <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> um, I was surprised by both of their choices. Like How what so? they, yeah. What well, so. Um, I just assumed, maybe it's because I'm not Tyus, but I assumed that he would just like go to town on the figure, which yeah. is not what he, I mean, he did a little bit of work on it and then he like duplicated buildings, messed around with the composition a bit and then and then worked on the figure. Um, whereas Leo just like punched up the emotion and punched up the story mm -hmm. of his scene. Um, he didn't really change much except for the arm position and the bottle, right? And the rain, of course, but... Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, you, you can never tell what people are going to go for, what they're going to spend their last five minutes on. I wasn't sure what Leo was going to do in the first place because I felt like his composition was pretty finished. Mm -hmm. um, and while I think that you could imagine, like I said, you know, more crisply modeled buildings, I certainly didn't expect he was going to go throw all the buildings away and, yeah, 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 and, and yeah. redo them. And I'm, you know, and to be honest, I'm not actually sure. Like when you look at it, it reads really well. Like yeah, when you, you know talk what you're about at, yeah. a sculpt that looks finished, just because, you know, I dinged him on technique a little bit for fumbling with the building a little bit. That's just technique. The end result, I think, still reads as a finished piece. Mm -hmm. I do think the decisions he made really did punch it up. I like yeah. that he adjusted the lighting. I like that mm -hmm. he it feels like more of a composition now than an object. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I mean, you know, Tyus's work now looks even more like a shot straight from a noir graphic novel. Mm -hmm. um, I think he has a masterful grasp of forms, right? The way the lighting works, when you look at it and think about the figure, Finishing the figure, I think not finishing the figure as I saw him, you know, choosing to do other things, I think was a deliberate choice because he feels like what he was what he was really trying to do was get the 
the the shadow shapes, and mm -hmm. I think the shadow shapes are what he wanted. Time for judgment. That was an incredibly dramatic overtime after an incredibly dramatic finals match here at the London qualifier for the road to Tokyo. Before I announce the winner, I actually do want to earnestly say that like you guys went through a lot. You did three battles plus an overtime. It is a competition, so one person has to win, but you should both be incredibly proud of yourself. The skill that you displayed, the mastery is awe-inspiring, and it was an honor for all of us to get to watch you. Amazing work by both of you. Thank you so much. After much deliberation, we have come to a decision. And the winner of the London and final qualifier for the Road to Tokyo, who will be accompanying us to the Limits World Grand Prix 2019 in Tokyo in June, is... Tyus Jacobson. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tyus. Tyus wins an all-expense-paid trip to Tokyo to compete in the Limits Digital Art Battle. Well, quite, uh, quite, quite, a, quite a ride for the extra time there. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad we it really played to, played to my situation there. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah. I, I really didn't picture this going into the day. So, so yeah, this is a little bit unreal. I'm really, really looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you again in Tokyo. On the next special edition of The Road to Tokyo, we travel to Tokyo and follow Tyus, Malad, and Rose as they bring their medium skills to the ultimate tournament, the Limits World Grand Prix.